Happy New Year to everyone. Happy 2023. And today episode is about buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse, the new normal, Jeff. First of all, what is buyer's remorse? Uh, a buyer's remorse, it, it's, it's, it's a feeling. I mean, let's just get to the chase. It's a feeling. And in, in, in this market especially, let's talk about buyer's remorse. <laughs> It can be triggered by various uh, factors. Um, overspending is one of them. Sometimes buying something that doesn't really meet your expectations or, or, or needs at that point in time. And also making a decision that is really kind of against your values and your core beliefs. Those are really the things that can contribute to a buyer's remorse. That's basically buyer's remorse. You know, we're not going to get to the whole psychology about it. That's basically buyer's remorse, this Rick. No, no. Would you say that buyer's remorse is becoming more of a common thing, like way more common than it was previously? What other factors be contributing to that, like media? Well, I, I, I would, I, I would say, yes. Generally, buyer's remorse is becoming more, more common. But there are factors that contribute to buyer's remorse. One big factor, actually. Is what you just said is social media and the media in general. That's one of the main main things that contribute to it. Huge. Big okay, for example, <laughs> buyers remorse when it comes to social media. Now, there's two parts to it. There's the before and then there's the after. Before, we all saw on social media, sold, 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 sold in one day, sold in two days, sold over asking. Then you got the news, the media pumping it, pumping it even more, saying this is going crazy, prices are going to go through the roof, hurry up, it's not going to, you're not going to get these prices, it's going to go higher and higher and higher, you're going to miss out. So to that point, buyers felt that they needed to engage that and said, okay, shoot, if I don't do it now, I'm going to miss out. So they jumped into it. Happened to me with crypto. I see it every episode. That's right. It's not a crypto show. <laughs> I know, I know. But right. Similar thing. Now, the, yeah. the after. Now, what we're seeing now, we're not seeing the sold, sold, sold. Every third post on social media is a realtor saying sold. So the amount of online ads on that has gone down. But what you are seeing when ads coming saying sold well under asking now. So you're not saying sold, sold, sold. You're saying sold well under asking. We got this at this price when it before it was just at this price. Come to me if you want the same kind of deals. Then you have, and ironically, the, the media and, and news now saying prices are coming down, interest rates this. So now how can that lead to buyer's remorse? Well, if you're one of those buyers that bought in the before time, now you're seeing the after time, you're like, what did I just do? I should have waited. I shouldn't have bought that time. You're sure the before time and you bought just at that time, but maybe three or four days later on, you're like, did I need this? Did I need this? Did I really want this? But you fell into the whole matrix of the whole rush scenario. So social media can play a huge, huge role. And it's it's very hard not to get caught up in it. It's very easy to get caught up in the hype, especially when you see it everywhere. You got friends, you got family, you got coworkers, you got everyone talking about what they just did, what they just bought, their lifestyle, and especially the social dynamic group, that the circle that you have around you. If all of them are buying, buying this and buying that, you kind of don't want to feel like the, the last one out. So you kind of almost like peer pressure into buying it. And when I talk about going against your values and core, because some people might not caught that, that's what I meant right there. If Just because all your friends are going out and having a $100 uh, plate dinner, but if your core value is, you know, you don't want to spend $100, but you went there anyways because your social dynamic is doing that, well, that went against your values. And that happens a lot in this whole buying. When you have pressure from family, friends, your whole network saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Then you fall into the trap. So um, that's what I mean by that point, Rick. I've also, Jeff, I've also had people that I know bought at the peak of the market, right? Those people were even, you know, telling me like, hey, Ricky, you should buy, buy now, buy now, right? This is common, right? But then those same people now, they're like, man, do you think I should sell? <laughs> do you think I should sell? Or it's the same people, well, right? Well, you just, so, very, you just had a very good point there. Should I sell? Should I sell? A lot of people right now are, are at that stage of... Did I do the right thing? Should I sell? And unfortunately, the market's not there. And, you know, once again, that realtor looks like the bad guy saying, okay, well, you bought this property for, let's just use a round number again, a million dollars. Unfortunately, it's worth 900 now. You know, I, I can't do nothing for you. And, and that's exactly why we tell you guys to give us a call, all right? If you're thinking about moving anywhere around in British Columbia, especially the Fraser Valley area and greater Vancouver area, the number will be on the screen. Email us, text us, however which way you need to contact us. 
The information's there. Just reach out to us. We love helping you guys out, all right? And it's a new year. So once you want to get the free JC Holmes hoodie, all right, the new version. So don't forget, drop the comments in the comment section of any one of our videos and write the words, I have subscribed after subscribing to our channel and I will send you out that free JC Holmes hoodie. There's a couple of people I'm working on sending it that who recently actually responded to us and they're coming guys, okay? After this whole little, you know, weather issue we had, snowstorm and flooding. Back into the video there, Jeff. How can, how can we kind of well, feel well, less bad about our purchase, you know, if that's the case? Because well, even if somebody, let's say, made a good purchase, but potentially you don't know that they might be feeling something else inside. They might be like, oh, should I should have not. No. Absolutely, you can. And Rick, it goes to the same thing. We say every show starts with the letter P. Planning. It, yes, planning. <laughs> so the, the, the four steps here to, to minimize buyer's remorse. First is take your time. We're not in the same market anymore. We're not in that rush, 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 and you know everyone's doing it. Take your time. It's not like, I've said this before, Rick, so many times, it's not like you're booking in a room at a hotel somewhere and there's limited spots and you have to make the reservation now. You, don't, you have the time, take the time. And that will lead me right into my next point. Set a budget. Now, it's very easy to go over your budget. Let's say your budget is a million. But now you saw this other house here for 1.1. You're like, oh, okay, well, you know what? I think I can stretch it. So now you're looking at the 1.1. Now, all of a sudden, this new house came up, and it's 1.15. Oh, yeah, I can, I can probably do it. And then you saw the next one on 1 1.2. Now, all, even though you didn't go up high increments that way, but you started at a million. Now you're all the way up to 1.5 out of nowhere. And then you're wondering how the hell you got there. Well, that's how, right? Set a budget, stick to it. Then with that flows right into the next point of research. If you're taking your time, you're setting your budget, you have the time to research. Please, please, please. That is one of the most crucial points here, is doing the research. Once you've completed those three steps, you know what's left? Follow your instincts. If you feel that this is right for you, you feel you, you can see yourself living there or you can see this investment property, you've done your research, you took your time, you set your budget, it meets all the criterias, then, yeah, you're gonna find yourself in a situation where you're gonna battle yourself to try to get battle, uh, buyer's remorse because you ticked off everything you need to tick off. Those are my points. Was there any final thoughts you wanted to add to this episode before you give the final conclusion, though? Our next episode is going to be potentially about bad tenants. Can I say bad tenants? You can say, yeah, say that. I'm not sure. Professional sure. tenants. I learned about professional tenants. This well, what term. are professional what tenants? What are professional tenants, right? And just bad tenants. A lot of people having experience. Well, bad good experience. tenants, too. Yeah, there's good tenants, but we're just highlighting the bad ones right now. So, so, so would it be fair to say we're going to be talking about tenancy? We're going to be talking about tenancy. The good, the bad, the ugly. Right? Okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, thank you. By taking your time, doing your research, setting up a budget, trusting your instincts, these are things that will help make sure that buyer's remorse is a very minute chance of that becoming a reality for you. So the conclusion is, is planning. And this is Jeff Chad at JC Holmes, as you know, Ricky J right here, BC's Real Estate Podcast, JC Holmes, episode 49, we're signing out. Happy New Year again, guys, and we'll see you guys next week for another amazing episode. Follow us on TikTok. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys later.